I'm Danielle Heberling. Hi, my name's Ian Mackay. Hi there, my name is Lorenzo. And I'm here to talk about what a software engineer who works in the cloud does. I'm a senior software engineer at Ensamata. I'm also an AWS serverless hero. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I'm the cloud principal at Coblamo. I've been with Coblamo for about seven years, and I'm also an AWS community hero and ambassador. I'm from Barcelona, Spain, and currently an independent contractor for serverless guru as a staff engineer. As a cloud architect, I'm responsible for designing, implementing, and maintaining cloud architectures. These architectures might be serverless, they might be containerized, or they might be something a little bit more traditional with EC2. The typical tasks I go through day to day include creating diagrams that show on paper what an architecture might look like. It might be going through the limitations of a service, looking at the quotas of a service, and how I might get around some of these hard limits or soft limits. I can also look at the cost of different services, and that might be including comparing costs between two different features or two different services within the cloud, or something more broad, looking at the total cost of ownership, comparing an on-premises solution to a cloud-based solution. And there's also other aspects, so such as creating CI/CD pipelines to make sure that the way I'm deploying it is repeatable and I'm not gonna make any personalized mistakes for myself. Job responsibilities as a technical architect. What my main responsibilities are would be understanding, product, business, and technical or architectural requirements. These, <laughs> these are the main responsibilities is you need to understand a little bit of everything from business and product side, and also the global overview of the enterprise architecture that is taking place. So you need to understand product and business, what they want and how they want it, and also what they need, because most of the times want is a thing, needs is another thing and we first need to cover all needs and then we can start tackling the wants and on the other side we'll be understanding the technical and architectural requirements so any legal technical requirements such as pii data or the enterprise architecture side of things where okay how is this company or enterprise working or what architectural patterns are they trying to follow? That's something that you need to be able to understand. Then another responsibility is actually translating those high level architecture diagrams that might be prepared by the solutions architect or the enterprise architect and translate them into a detailed architecture diagram with all the different configuration, all the different services that will be used how they interact with each other. So with all the different details that are needed to actually implement that solution. And the last responsibility, which might possibly be one of the most important ones, is supporting business analysts and developers during the actual implementation of the design. It's not just about designing features, architecture components, it's about also supporting during the actual implementation. You might end up developing or designing the best possible solution, but if you're not there to help out and make sure that it's implemented correctly, it won't be, at the end of the day, it won't be the best possible architecture. Day to day can look very different, like many jobs, but I'll name a few kind of common tasks that I tend to do throughout the week. So first off, pairing and collaborating with coworkers. Sometimes it's to help me level up on something. Sometimes it's to help them level up. And just general knowledge sharing. So if I build out you know, a new system or make a significant update, we as a team really have a documentation culture. So make sure that we're updating readme files, wikis, things like that, comments in the code. Another part of my day might look like planning out the architecture for a new system or re an existing system if there's significant updates that need to be done. And unfortunately, as a software engineer, we have meetings. So luckily at this current company, we actually don't have a lot of meetings and our meetings are more to communicate bigger picture things. So stuff like the larger roadmap and our 
success and failures towards, you know, approaching the goals on that roadmap. So sometimes it might look like talking about where we are in the status of a project. And then also like on my immediate platform team, we meet every other week to divide up work and just make sure that everything that needs to get done uh, is assigned out to someone. And just because it's assigned out to you doesn't mean that you're 100% on the hook for doing it. Um, it just means that you are the point of contact for that and it's your responsibility to see it through and make sure it gets done. Another thing I might be doing is helping out with deployments. So making sure that we are deploying to prod often ideally a few times a week, depending on how much code has been pushed. And then finally, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, as a software engineer, writing code. So at my company, a lot of times the tasks will come out of those meetings that we have. Most of the time, an engineering manager or the, our one product manager will write out the JIRA tickets and assign them to us to do. Also, as software engineers, we're also empowered to create our own tickets if we see things that need to get done. But anyway, the writing code part mostly looks like me either, you know, taking a JIRA ticket that I created or just picking one off the backlog and getting to work on it. So. My team mostly focuses on the platform, API, background sync process, flavors of tickets. And code writing wise, I find a lot of my day to day when I'm writing code to be spent writing CDK. That's Cloud Development Kit, which is a way to write infrastructure as code to deploy AWS resource. And we use the TypeScript version of that. Our entire back end to front end is TypeScript, so it helps with context switching. Uh, we don't have to do it as much language wise. So beyond the CDK code, I do spend my time writing TypeScript code in the back end, sometimes for Lambda functions within our sync process. Also, we have a monolithic REST API in Fargate. Sometimes it's writing resolvers for our app sync GraphQL setup. Day-to-day -day tasks that might not be for everyone, but the first one is meetings. A lot of meetings. <laughs> we have meetings with products, we have meetings with business, we have meetings with ant enterprise or solution architects, or even meetings with all of them. The idea behind the meetings is everyone needs to be aligned. Alignment is something very important in this field because you might end up designing a perfect architecture or perfect design, but if it's not aligned with the needs of product or with the needs of business that won't end up working. So therefore we have multiple meetings to align everyone and ensure we're all working towards the same goal. Another day-to-day -day task, which might be possibly the one that I like the most, would be researching, analyzing and documenting all those technical designs to be implemented. What I mean by this is from the meetings, we end up with a list of requirements, a list of features that are needed, things like that. And you need to think of, okay, we don't have those requirements, but how are we going to implement them? What design do we need or what design do we want to implement it? And for that, there's a lot of research, analyze, proof of concepts that I end up developing, things that we need to ensure or to do to ensure that the design that we propose is actually working, possible, and scalable and cost-effective. And the last day-to-day -day task, it's not really day-to-day, -day, but maybe once a week, once every two weeks, would be presented designs and supporting their implementation. What I mean by this is day-to-day, -day, one might get questions from developer, from business analysts in terms of, hey, you presented that design, but how can we implement this part? Or how would that business logic fit inside that technical design? Those are things that one needs to be on top of them to help them out and help or support during the implementation. And the other part of that would be actually presenting the designs. You might be the best in documenting things or preparing documents, but it's always best to prepare or present the designs that you have in mind. In our case, what we do is we plan different walkthroughs, which are just meetings of the technical architects 
going over and presenting all the different features and how they should be implemented to ensure that correct handoff is done between architecture and then business analysts and devs. The largest challenges that I've faced generally center around more like soft skills type of things. So the first thing that comes to mind to me is really just making sure that the requirements are correct and complete before coding happens, just to ensure that we are building the right thing for our customer. This happens at any company, so definitely not specific to mine, but I've definitely noticed that sometimes when you're dealing with multiple people in a chain of communication, sometimes that can get lost and sometimes things are overlooked or forgotten or not even thought about. And then when it comes to me as the engineer to implement it, sometimes things aren't always clear and I usually need to go back to the author of that ticket, usually our product manager or engineering manager, um, just to get clarification. And sometimes questions that I ask uh, prompt more questions. But at the end of the day, like my main goal is, you know, code is just a way that we solve problems. My job is to solve problems, not to write code. So that's why I tend to think about it that way. And another challenge on a more personal level, uh, personally, I've experienced that sometimes it can get lonely being the only engineering woman in the room. I don't mean to downplay my coworkers. I work with some really fantastic men, fantastic allies. Uh, but personally, I would really love to have more women working with me, specifically more women in engineering, more technical type of roles. And I'm not suggesting that this is the case everywhere. Uh, some companies do have a lot of women in engineering. But overall, on average, I will say that a lot of places that I've worked has been very male dominated, especially in engineering. Challenges. <laughs> challenges as a technical architect, we have uh, multiple challenges, but I want to focus only on two of them, two that mm, not really struggle the most of, but two that you will face almost every day or at least every week which is the first one, changing requirements. Requirements always change and they will always change. So we need to ensure that the designs that we propose or the implementations that we want to take on are as future-proof as possible, or at least that we can have that little door open in terms of adding more requirements, adding more features, etc. That doesn't mean that for every single design and implementation, you need to leave everything open to be as reusable as possible because it, it might not be cost effective or it might not scale well, or it might take too long to develop, to leave it like that. But that's something that we always need to have in mind in order to actually design the best or future-proof architectures. And another one would be global overview. What I mean by this is our workflow is like a waterfall diagram. What I mean by this is that developers and business solution architects, uh, analysts, will be working and requiring support of designs that were presented weeks or months ago. In my day-to-day, -day, I might be working and having meetings about a feature that I will be presenting next week or next month. And that feature might be completely different from the last one that I presented. But it's very important and challenging to always have that global overview and information regarding all the different designs that are currently being implemented or to be implemented to be able to support those devs and business analysts in terms of answering any questions, any concerns, explaining them how they need to implement them or how they need to build the different stories for Jira for devs to understand. There's a lot of misconceptions in the cloud. One of the popular ones that I get is that I should know every service, every feature, every limit. Nobody knows these things. You should have a really broad understanding about what each service does and generally how it interacts with the ecosystem, but that could be very service level or it could be very deep. And a lot of people talk about the way that developers understand these things. There's a common set of services that you might want to go deep on, 
and that most people should, uh, but it's not a broad range. We don't have to know everything. Another common misconception I get is that the cloud is an all-in strategy, that you need to drop everything you have on premises or wherever your workloads live and move it immediately in the cloud. This is not the case. A lot of really successful companies have adopted a hybrid strategy where they move workloads that make sense, very simple workloads or complicated workloads that they can build from scratch into the cloud themselves while still maintaining an on-premises presence. So that misconception is always there. It's not true. You can mix and match however you please. Uh, another misconception is that you should always have the word cloud in your job title to do cloud work. That is not the case. A lot of really successful cloud architects, cloud developers, whatever you call them, have job titles that have nothing to do with what they are actually doing within the cloud. And that's fine. It's just a, it's just a word. Uh, you just need to uh, look at what your real job responsibilities are and then perform to that. This is a misconception that I hear often from more front-end oriented engineers who might have graduated from a coding boot camp type of program. A lot of times when they're talking to me, they seem to have the misconception that people in more platform engineering back, back end cloud type of rules are smarter than them and that back end and cloud is really hard to do. And I would dispel that misconception by saying that software is a team sport and there are many different specialties. All are important because all need to get done. And, you know, for example, you wouldn't want someone like me writing the CSS for your application, but you would want me handling your infrastructure as code. So to me, I think they're just different areas of expertise. And I strongly believe that anyone with the interest and motivation learn more about cloud can and can be successful. A second misconception that comes to mind is people feel like these types of roles often have a disruptive on-call rotation. So like you'll be out at the movie theater on the weekend and you get a page because the system's down and then you can't live a regular life because you're constantly getting paged. And I would dispel that myth by saying from my experience, this has not been true. Uh, sure, definitely sometimes there are times where things happen and we do need to stop what we're doing and fix. But overall, that's more the exception than the general rule. And I found things like this can be prevented by making sure you have a good code review process, good testing, good CICD, and at the root of it all, just a team that's willing to take ownership of the code they write. So personally, I would dispel that myth by saying that hasn't been my experience. And typically there, I don't deal with any pages during the off hours in my current role. One of the most misconceptions about cloud developments or any role that is cloud tech would be that you need to have a knowledge of everything, you need to know everything or be able to do anything on your own, which is mainly not true. In most cases, if you're not in a startup, then you will always have, or very small company, you will always have support and other roles that are actually there to do so, such as DevOps or infra team or cloud team, etc. As a cloud developer, uh, serverless developer, etc. Most of your time, you would actually spend it developing in your programming language that you are already used to work on. So JavaScript or Python, for example. The time that you will spend actually handling infrastructure configuration, infrastructure as code, etc. will be way smaller than you might think. Most of your time, you will be just developing and working on new features on the code. It's, yeah, you will actually need to learn new things and learn how to do those infrastructure as code changes, etc. But that's not a thing that you need to be a pro at from the beginning. That's something that you can learn on the go.